What's the scariest, weirdest, most mysterious website you ever visited, or mystery you have ever seen on the internet? Not really a website, but someone slash group on the net made me think about the importance of privacy and never giving out your real information for anything, ever, especially on the net. In 1998, when the net was still personal, there was a news group called Belfour. If you don't know what news groups is, they are the precursors to peer-to-peer slash torrent slash irk, and still exist in baby forms. There was a network within the news group called Combleman, and basically what they specialized in doing was letting people know that they knew who you were, if they wanted. I had later learned that this guy or guys were actually responsible for taking down the designers of B.O., Back Orifice, and a number of other unruly internet clans for instance Eric Corley. Either way long story short, I had once met a bloke who claimed to know a guy in Comleyman through work, after much discussion regarding their capabilities and my curiosity for him to prove it, I was told to come back into the channel at a certain hour and wait. So I did it. An hour or so went by, can't remember the specifics, but I received a PM in ERC to a web address via IP HTTP colon slash slash I dot P. Dot ad dot res. Now you must know that I had never given out my information to anyone. It was 1998 and realistically the only people who could have even had information that related to me would be my ISP, and even that would have been through a relative, not myself. But I went to that IP address, and on the page was an image of my birth certificate. Reminds me of the time about a decade ago when my mom received a letter in the mailbox that came from an unknown source in a generic white envelope, with no stamp on it. The envelope could have been slipped into the mailbox by anybody based on how the mailbox is oriented. In the envelope was a handwritten piece of paper with a list of all the bio data for me and my siblings. Names, birthdays, place of birth, time of birth, etc. and, get this, the name of the doctor that delivered us. We weren't born in the US. This comment will never see the light of day but oh well. When I was in high school my friends and I checked out acdc.com and computer tech class. This was around the time where a lot of major artists didn't have websites yet, and this was especially true for ACDC since they had long since faded from relevancy and had not started their comeback yet. It turned out to be a torture porn site. Allow torture porn site. I have a few interesting links to add. 1. Ted is God. Just read it. He has a YouTube account as well. Don't troll, I think his guy actually needs some help or medication or something. 2. This is the text of a 27-page called The Book of Emmanuel David Isaiah, dated April 6, 2002. Authorities believe this is the work of Brian David Mitchell, suspected of kidnapping Elizabeth Smart in 2001. Complete raving non says. 3. Also, I've been into urban exploring for a while, and there are a lot of great, creepy urban exploring sites out there. If you just want to look at all the pics, the largest database is the Urban Exploration Resource. They've got everything from abandoned nuclear silos in Ukraine to Saddam Hussein's destroyed palace. Chances are you'll find something in your own city. 4. Some unsolved murder cases have quite a following and sites devoted to them. The Oklahoma Girl Scout murders or the Ketty murders to name a few. Even a few missing persons cases give me the chills for some reason, like the Grateful Doe story, read the about me on the right side. The Tame and Shoot case is another very strange crime mystery. 5. Numbers stations, spies everywhere. Once upon a time I visited a website that displayed two pictures. You would click whichever pic you preferred. After five or six clicks the website would declare it knew something about you. Something unrelated to the pics. It was correct most of the time. I don't remember what the site was or how I found it. Does anyone remember John Titter, the alleged time traveler from the future? Even though there's no way he could be real, I always thought the Laura's pictures of his time machine were creepy as hell. Anybody remember CutOffMyFeet.com? A guy had terrible foot pain and wanted to amputate, so the website said. He was taking donations for entry into a contest to be the person who, via the internet, would be able to push a keyboard key that activated a homemade guillotine to remove his affected feet. The whole thing was planned out with a scheduled date and audience. Ambulance would be already called. Never heard what happened. ShayStJohn.net. The idea slash story slash mythos behind Shay St. John is that she was a hot woman who was horribly disfigured in a car accident. As a result, she appears in public wearing this weird ass, creepy as fuck mask, 
and hobbles along with clunky prosthetic legs and hands. Her mind appears to have sustained a bit of damage as well, as the numerous short films, bits of wisdom, and assorted clickables on her website can attest. The Mayday Mystery There were a load of conspiracy theories like occult, government recruiting, the Illuminati, and etc. Basically, this guy found this weird Kriprik ad in his school paper, and turns out that they date back to the early 80s, possibly even further, and still continue to this day. The ads included the word Mayday, and a lot of ciphers and math. Apparently, the guy who discovered this was messaged by the mysterious group who made it, although I'm a little skeptical about that. I had a previous Reddit account at least a decade ago when Reddit was pretty new. I came across a post from a guy who swore that a particular website that looked like a generic local news site with the usual AP and Reuters news feeds was actually a government-run intelligence program. It functioned like a number station in plain sight. Meaning that the exact wording used would match up with a one-time use pad and provide intelligence info. I cannot remember the exact website, but it looked unimpressive and the domain was registered in Bahrain, despite appearing to cater to a mid-sized US city. He then said he was being harassed in real time since he made that post. Then he said he got doxxed and strangers were calling him telling him to cut it out. I tried to reply to his post a few minutes later, but then found that his Reddit account and every post he made were deleted. What was that all about? Really young, really stupid. Use of YouTube. Not sure how I got there, what it was called or even if it was a fake YouTube website. But I saw a video with music that song in Toy Story when Buzz is in Sid's house, trying to fly out in falls, of this guy with a mower blade or something gleefully chopping people up as they run away in terror. He killed a guy with a decapitation-ish thing, the head was cut off from the mouth up, that slid to these two people cowering. I freaked out and left, never saw it again. When I was in elementary school I played a lot of online games like Club Penguin. I was 8 years old when my dumbass gave my brother's email address, that I used to sign up for these games, to a friend that I had met online. After that, I wasn't allowed to play on the computer anymore and I didn't know why. A few years later I found out that my brother, who is 10 years older, had checked his email and found multiple emails for me, all with pictures of a naked middle-aged man. I'm still disgusted. Back before the internet internet, before AOL was a big thing, me and some buds made a relay message setup that used some abandoned telegraph lines in my town, we were too cheap to pay for the phone time, and C64S. And we made these cards that would send out electrical pulses that would be deciphered on the other end. It was painfully slow, like 2 bits a second, and could take an hour to get a large message across. Also one one person could send a message at a time where the receiver would get mixed letters. Now that I think about it, it was basically a telegraph that was operated by computers. Our computers would identify themselves to each other and we could see who sent the message looking at a three-digit identification code that would be sent with a message automatically. One day I was sitting listening and waiting for my friend to send me something, we would call ahead to let each other know before we sent so the other party could receive. I started getting a message that had no identifier and it read something like, if memory doesn't fail me, Echo Cadillac 275,610,473,018,000 it spat random numbers the message played for about five minutes and wasn't too long but i called my friend and he got it too we never did figure out what that was it was a closed system on abandoned telegraph lines that had been cut we ended up blaming it on a computer error in basic or something but it never happened again or maybe some kid from school found out and wanted to mess with us who knows fun times i remember a couple years back I went on Omegled with a pal and wanted to try and be a haha funny troll sort of conversation type. We got matched with this anonymous person and I simply said hey. The anonymous person replied how he knew it was two people looking over their phone, giggling in a brown room, my bedroom was brown, how he knew there were no sort of parent or older adult and how we better watch the electrics because they'll go out if we carry on. Instantly, we kinda nervous laughed and went about the night after calling that it's a bad idea. About an hour later. We hear an alarm go off that sounds like it's right outside my house. We sat still and didn't move before going on our phones, the internet went off. I went to check the hub and it was still plugged in, just the actual hub wasn't working. As I was walking back to my room, the electrics went off and my thrower is in the basement. I went down, basically sprinted, 
flipped the electrics back on and went back to bed. Didn't sleep for hours but nothing else happened. Weirdest and most uncomfortable experience of my entire life. Back in early 2000s I'd talk a ton of shit online thinking nothing would ever come of it. I was talking shit playing Halo PC. I kept giving some guy shit about him being a liar and he couldn't hack anything. He posted my address my name on the in-game chat. Then my computer shut off. Freaked me the hell out. Nothing else happened luckily. Creepy. Not as scary but about 11 years ago, my brother used to download games off some site for free. We got a call from some guy threatening to call authorities. He knew what he was downloading and when. What was terrifying is that he got our home phone number. One of my favorite creepy mystery sites sadly doesn't appear to exist anymore, this is noteporn.com. I assume it's the inspiration for Notepron, which has been linked a couple times both by name and by design. It was an extremely cryptic and creepy puzzle site that at the time took some serious ingenuity to figure out. Notepron would go on to use many of the ideas and puzzles to create perhaps a longer puzzle. The very first page was a strange image of an old stove sitting in a field with lights that would occasionally appear inside of it, while numbers station sounds played in the background. The puzzles were pretty crazy, for me at the time, at least, the first one was a red page just filled with gibberish ASCII and clicking in a certain spot would start a login prompt. However, if you control plus aid the page and copied it into notepad, various spots of white space formed a short poem, an oracle predicted me, Alexander cut me, speak my name to clear your path. Turns out to be a reference to the Gordian knot, and the username slash password Alexander slash Gordian would let you get through. And that was just the first puzzle. The puzzles got more and more complex and eventually started to hint at something sinister, talking about a missing boy, a drowning child, and other things with those damned number stations playing in the background. I never made it very far into the site on my own, but Unfiction.net had a huge thread about it, and it may still be there on their forums. Some users managed to get past all the puzzles to a final page that only showed a timer counting down with a message to find the boy. My friends and I ordered some weed off Silk Road a long time ago and this guy stiffed us stop we confronted him about it and he kept denying and got pissed about it and started threatening us. We decided to just forget about it. But one of our friends was still pissed and decided to contact the guy again demanding a refund. His computer screen shut off but webcam still on. Nothing happened after that but still gives us chills.